Hi Creekside Kids! We are here in the kitchen today because, well, frankly, my family had a hankering for brownies. And brownies and recipes and cookbooks got me actually thinking about the Bible and how it can be kind of like a cookbook. The nice thing about the Bible, though, is it is true. I don't know about you if you've ever tried a new recipe that you thought was going to be delicious and then you tasted it and you were like, nah, I did not like that at all. The Bible is not like that. The Bible is the truth about God and it says, taste and see that the Lord is good and every time you do, you will find that God truly is good. So, even though we've been studying the book of Philippians all summer, I'm wondering as you start school and fall, if you remember all the other 66 books of the Bible. Let's see. The books of the Bible Time-tested and reliable Scripture has a power that's undeniable Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus Numbers and Deuteronomy Joshua, Judges, Ruth First and Second Samuel First and Second Kings First and Second Chronicles Ezra, Nehemiah Esther, Job, and Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, and Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, and Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. The books of the Bible, their wisdom's verifiable. Scripture has a power that's undeniable. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and Romans, 1st Corinthians. 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians 1 and 2, 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, First and Second John, Third John, Jude and Revelation, the books of the Bible, time tested and reliable. Now you know all 66 books of the Bible. Did you remember all 66? All right, well, here you go. Little secret about me, not the best cook. <laughs> so I don't use a cookbook when I'm making brownies. I try to find ways to make things with as few ingredients as possible. So I'm totally cheating. I got this giant box of brownies at Costco. And Costco also kind of reminds me of Jesus. And we'll tell you about that in a minute. But here's the thing. I like recipes that are easy, that don't have a lot of ingredients in them. So I'm cheating and I'm using something really basic to make my brownies. And if you think of the book of Philippians, it's a little bit like a recipe for joy. All summer long, we've been talking about joy and what it's like and how to get it. And I really think Paul's point is that joy is a one ingredient recipe. And the only ingredient you need is Jesus. Now you might not think that Jesus is able to give you absolutely everything you need, but when you look at the book of Philippians, I actually had Lauren go through and highlight it for me. He talks about all the things that we get in Jesus, through Jesus, in Christ, in Christ Jesus, in the Lord, in his faithfulness, because of Jesus, through Jesus, in him, on his faithfulness, in the Lord, in the Lord always. And it just goes on and on. In fact, 20 different times, Paul says that really everything we need is found in Jesus. And it was actually Lauren that came up with the idea of how Jesus is actually kind of like a Costco card. So, can you explain that? 
All right, so Costco is this really large store. By the way, this video is not sponsored, but it's a very large store where you can pretty much find just about anything in Costco. But to gain entry to Costco, you just need one little card. And that's, yeah, that's Costco. So Jesus is your access card. And think about all the things that we get when we have Jesus. We gain a savior, a friend, a heavenly father, a heavenly family, a heavenly home, a heavenly kingdom, a heavenly mission. And it all starts with Jesus. And you know what I hope more than anything? I hope the one ingredient that you have in your life in these difficult times is Jesus. And that in those times you never feel alone because you know him. And that is the great joy of life, knowing Jesus. So as we sing this next song, I really invite you to praise the Lord from your heart for all that Jesus has done for you. But he brought me and oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last, he has free. Jesus, thank you so much for all that you have done for us. Thank you that you love us, that you've set us free, that you've forgiven us, that you've chosen us, and that we can be children of God. And thank you for all that comes with that. 
We love you, Jesus. Amen. You know, our brownies are done. And they didn't just take three minutes to cook while you were singing. We actually waited a whole entire hour for this deliciousness. And Lauren has eaten an entire plate of them almost. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you won't see her eating anymore. But I wanted to make the point that these brownies are like the good things that God give us. And one of the things that we can think is that God wants us to take these brownies and have them all to ourselves. And that he gave everything we have to us for us to enjoy alone. But that is not how the kingdom of God works. God gives us good things so that we can share them with other people. And we don't have to be afraid of sharing what we have because he is rich and glorious and able to give us everything that we need, just like we talked about last week. So I think the reason that we struggle with this is because we have a hard time with how long it takes for God to make us like Jesus, right? Jesus left his home. Jesus left his throne. Jesus gave up his life. Jesus knew that his joy would be bigger if we could be with him in heaven someday. But we struggle to believe those things. We tend to be selfish. We tend to get angry. We tend to disagree with people. We tend to want our own stuff to stay our own stuff. And it takes a long time to become like Jesus. Brownies don't take three minutes to cook. It takes an hour. It takes time. And we don't become like Jesus overnight. And I think that's why Paul started out his recipe for joy with this promise. It says this, I thank my God every time I remember you. I always pray with joy in my every pray, prayer for all of you because of your participation in the gospel from the first day until now. For I am sure of this very thing, that the one who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. And that's what we're counting on. We're counting on the fact that God gives us time to grow. He doesn't expect us to become like Jesus overnight. And since he is patient with us, we can believe that he can make us patient with other people. And in the meantime, we can pray. He says, don't be anxious about all the stuff going on in your life. Instead, come to me and pray. And so I hope this next song reminds you that when we ask, he cares. When we seek, he's there. See you next week. It says to me, tells me that I'm never ever alone. I'm learning how J E S U S came down to us and gave his best. Without a doubt, the best friend you'll ever know. And our God knows exactly what I need. So I remember this. Let's go. When you ask, he cares. When you seek, he's there. It says to me, tells me that I'm never, ever alone. I'm learning how J-E-S-U-S came down to us and gave his best. Without a doubt, the best friend you'll ever know. And our God knows exactly what I need. So I remember this. Let's go. When you ask, he cares. When you seek, he's there.
When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. When you ask, He cares. When you seek, He's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. And now God knows exactly what I need. So I remember this. Oh, when you ask, He cares. 